All right, so I just got top 16 at 169 player regional yesterday, and I'm super proud and excited to do the deck profile. But before we get started, I'll also be doing a giveaway just to celebrate the top. Plus we're almost at 15,000 subscribers, which is unreal to me, but we'll be doing a massive giveaway once we reach 15K. But for today, I just decided to give away some items from my sponsors. I'll be giving away this beautiful deck box from Sleeve Chief, as well as the sleeves, some Dragon Shield sleeves, and this amazing Pokemon Ball Imperium Duelist dice, which I love their dice. It is like amazing. And um, yeah, all you have to do to enter is like, sub, and make sure you comment something on this video. So good luck with that. But also Sleeve Chief has their drop today. So make sure to keep an eye out for that. They have beautiful playmats coming out as well as some secret rare sleeves, which I think are awesome. Code Shadow for 5% off. And uh, with that, we can go ahead and get started with the deck profile. So I played pure Snake Eye. I went 6-2 and for the deck I took inspiration from multiple topping deck profiles. Mainly I looked at what Gabriel Nets and his team did as well as Luca Saka and also Hisam Jari. So all of their deck profiles were definitely an inspiration for my deck today. So as for the Snake Eye package, I played 3-Ash, three, three 2 Poplar, one oak and the double flame bridge. I think this is very standard and pretty much what you have to be playing. And as for their spell cards, we also have one field spell and one original. Field spell is unreal. Like it just, it was amazing. I love playing this card and I just think pure snake eye is, um, you know, really great compared to fire king snake eye. And then we also have three wanted and the three diabel star to go alongside. The first package, with, which I think is very self-explanatory. You need three Diabel Star. It's like there are multiple different ratios in like the Fire King build, etc. But I think for this build in particular, you have to play three. It is just the one of the best starters, and it just makes it so easy to play through hand traps, especially when you open like Bonfire and Ash alongside the Witch as well. So three bonfire and to round off the engine part of the deck it's also jet synchron and one for one as for jet synchron um i don't want to spend too much time on it but i did decide to play it it was fine like i get why people are cutting it but i just really liked going into formula i summoned formula like two times because i opened the one for one on top of my combo and then i just went for jet synchron and just the combo was um you know that much better because of it you don't have to play it i understand that your combo is not going to go through every single time so it also makes sense to cut it but you can do whatever you want i did enjoy playing it as for hand traps look there's a lot of them it's just what we have to be doing right now and uh, i'm really glad i played all of them actually three ash three valor three nibiru okay i'm gonna have to move the cards because there's too many hand traps so let me rearrange stuff on my playmat and then there's also three moonlit and um, a draw and three impermanence look i know this is not exactly visually pleasing but this this is my lineup of hand traps um i guess mourner is like the only one that's not that standard i did like it because in the mirror match which i won both of my mirror matches mainly because of the hand traps that i had on top of the combo because if they open well enough they're probably going to be able to push through most of your board. So you need cards like Moonlit and Valor and stuff like that to just stop them in their track and, uh, you know, make sure you guarantee the win for yourself. Other than that, Mourner is not amazing against, you know, I guess I played Flunder, which obviously is not going to be great in that matchup. And it's not always that good, but I do like it because you just have to play such a huge count of hand traps so it makes sense to have the Mourner in there as well. And uh, you probably figured it out by now, but I do play one troll because of the three cross out, which are also in my deck. I did decide to main deck this and I was actually really satisfied. I was able to cross out a Nibiru and then I'm pretty sure like um, one of the targeting negation cards as well. So I was satisfied with this card. I never bricked on it. I also used it once to just set it at the end of my turn to be able to like cross out a talent or something like that, which is in my side deck. But yeah, you know, I was really satisfied with the main deck and it's just, it feels really good to play a deck that doesn't brick. <laughs> like I just loved playing it because every single hand that I had actually did something. As for the extra deck, this is the synchro package. 
I don't think I summoned Borderload once. Pretty sure I didn't. I wanted to, but all of my stuff got booked because of the Flunder Trap card. So I guess the intention was there. I did summon Baron also with a hand trap once, which was awesome. And then Formula I already talked about. The draw is amazing. With the Formula, I drew uh, a draw against Flunder, which just felt really nice. Um, then as for the link stuff, obviously you need your Link Kuribo, IP and SP as well. Some people play multiples of SP, which is fine in some combos, which help you play through Nibiru. But other than that, I think SP at one is fine because you're just able to access it to deal with their follow up and to prevent them from any kind of comeback. And then what you do is you just put it in the spell and trap card zone with flame merge and you get to utilize it later. So I never missed a second copy, but if you feel like you have space, you can obviously do that. Then as for your one of the most important cards in your extra deck, Hita and Dark, obviously. And then obviously Nightmare Phoenix is also here. Like, I don't think I summoned it once. Maybe I summoned it once. And I did want to summon it to out a uh, summon limit, but my opponent was good. And, uh, you know, they knew they had to get rid of my bodies that I tried to establish during his turn as well. So I never got to the actual Phoenix. But I do think you have to play it. And then Princess, Celine, and Access Code as well. I think these cards are mandatory. And if you're playing Celine anyway, because of, you know, the Abel Star Synergy and like Charmers, you know, Veiler, Droll, there's a lot of spellcasters. You also need access. And I think you have enough space to do that. And then also Apolusa, Zialantis, and also the Raging Phoenix. I never did the OTK. But I did go from Phoenix into Zialantis to just be able to set up a board with like flame birch and you know other things so i never otk'd but i did utilize those cards for my going first combo and obviously apalooza is like so good it is so so strong and then as for the side deck i decided to play you know two more copies of draw for any annoying matchup where you need the draw in and then i also played the um Bishios for my hand trap which I used them, I, I think I, I mean, I know I put them in against Voiceless, but I don't think I drew them. And I also used them against some other matchup where pretty much I just needed a, a body and I just kept on beating them down. So they did something because I was under skill drain. So all I did with Magdamut was just attack, but 25 is not bad. And then uh, the three ghost bell, which bell is amazing. I was able to bell a pre-prep when it really mattered. And also, like, I think I, I used Ghost Bell some other time when it was, like, really impactful. So, yeah, I think Ghost Bell is really important. It is arguably main deck worthy if you don't want to play, like, an Ibiru or something, which is a little situational. But you can do whatever you want. And as for another hand trap, I will discuss that as well. But when we get to another card in the side deck. So there's also two talents, one called by for going first or second if you, like, need talents to push through things really good you know i like talents and then the the card that i was talking about so two summon limit and one agave dragon so yes um obviously if you cannot tell by now i did not find my third summon limit for the life of me i have no idea where it is but i had to put a 15th card so i decided to you know play um you know agave dragon what i would do though and what i Im implore you to do is play one ghost ogre for your cross out target and this is the hand trap I, I wanted to talk about before because I literally lost a gigantic grind game because I did not have Ghost Ogre as a cross out target. They ogred my dark and I only needed, I had to climb to Princess. I wasn't able to. So please play Ogre, you know, since you're playing like a gazillion hand traps anyway. And then the cross out just, I don't think you need the Agave Dragon that desperately, just play Ogre. And I guess find space for the third summon limit because two is not gonna be enough if you actually wanna see it going first. So yes, uh, I think that's pretty much it. A lot of the, this is like self-explanatory and basic, nothing too spicy, but I really just enjoyed playing a consistent deck that makes sense. So if you have any questions, I would love to answer them in the comments. And obviously don't forget to enter into the giveaway. Make sure you are subbed, like, and also comment so I can, you know, ship these amazing products out to you. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.